to be removed. She was humiliated. You remember that case, right, Alex? And I tell people, I bet you one day, one hour before that incident happened, that lady, if she would have heard me talk about it or you, Alex, would say, oh, well, we had terrorist attack. These men, young men are doing their jobs until it happened to her. And then she stood up and she said, this is tyranny. This is despicable. This is humiliating. Do we have to wait for these things to happen to every single one or majority of our people? Well, female, Can't we just watch others and say, that's like happening to me or to my kid? Why do we have to wait until it happens to us? You're right. This has been an epic discussion, and I want to have you back, and I'd love to have you uh, on via Skype, and then the, you know, the other guy on the phone, or both of you on Skype. I would love to have that whistleblower on, and other whistleblowers you'd like to bring forward, because I'm not scared. I'm only, not because I'm a tough guy. I've studied history. I'm scared of giving in to these people and the world they're going to create for everybody. And we only have the liberties we have because people fought hard for them. And I know there's good people in the government and corporate America. I know they're everywhere. Sometimes I paint with a broad brush because the system itself is broken. And I'm tired of saying, oh, well, there's some good people, and, but there's some bad or good apples, bad apples. The bad apples are all at the top. So the whole system has been taken over. And now Newsweek and Times say the Constitution's bad and it did this. No, we got rid of it and we didn't defend it. And we let them eat little holes in it because, oh, it was just a little bit. Now it's all gone. It's, 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 it's running like blood out of us. This country's going into shock. We're dying. And, and this is an epic moment. We've got to stand up and say no or we're going to lose everything. The criminal element is robbing everything. They seek in their own words a post-industrial world where they use poverty as a tool of control. This is, this is scientifically deployed and developed evil. They admit it in their own words. The think tanks you know, write this stuff like we're not reading it because the general public is asleep, mesmerized in this false paradigm. But, the, but the, there can be a chain reaction. It's already begun through people like you, Seabell, and others, and we're going to continue it, and your courage is a beacon. Two-minute closing comment. Well, this you basically cited the reason of why, after all these years, I decided to challenge the government and come out and write this book, Classified Woman. I wrote it. I challenged not only the government. I'm still challenging them. I challenged the establishment, the 1%, the corporate, mega-corporate publishers, and right now, I'm challenging the mainstream media and the quasi-alternative. You were gracious to give me the forum and let me talk about these issues, tell people about this case, about what it means to our country, about classified women, the book. And, and they're watching you, Alex. I, I think a lot of people, those quasis, they are currently outraged because they wanted, they wanted this, like many other issues, many other cases, to just die down, go unnoticed, so they can go and sell these fantasies to people, all these, all these baloney fantasies. So, so you are challenging. You've been challenging them every day. I wrote this book to challenge them. I am challenging it. People who get this book, Classified Woman, and read it, when you get it, you're getting directly from me. There are no other publishers. There are no corporate. There is nothing. It's just, it's an independent publishing. It's from me. It's the truth. It's nothing but the truth. That's why the government doesn't want it. By reading it, by telling other people about it, you are challenging it. And as Alex, you have been telling people, we can't sit and wait. It's good to like Gandhi. I like Gandhi. We can do yoga. We can do deep reading. But it, this is, this, these are the drastic times. And we need to really, really get up and take action. And don't say it was it's futile. You know, don't say there are two candidates. Don't say there are candidates that are not winnable. Don't say that because when you say it, that's when they win. I don't care if that candidate, the third party candidate or the third uh, person, the independent one gets 18 percent. It gets votes. Maybe this time that person will get 20 percent. And that may yes. be the cause for next time to get 40. Do it. Don't futile. It's not futile. If most people get up and do it, then it won't be futile. That's my closing You're statement. Right. Sorry. You're right. Absolutely. Resistance is victory. And as Mark Twain said, in the beginning, a patriot is a scarce man, hated, scorned, and feared. But in time, when his cause succeeds, the timid join him because then it costs nothing to be a patriot. And you are somebody doing it when it costs a lot. So she is a patriot to the human race and to truth and to the incredible things these criminals are doing. People are waking up to the drug war. Even Pat Robertson says decriminalize drugs now. 
uh, humanity will move against these tyrants. And as all of us who are small do small things or big things like you're doing and I'm doing or others are doing, it, 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 it comes together and creates a tsunami of unstoppable information. And that's happening now. Believe me, you say your neighbors don't know who you are, but that's because you've been in mainstream media mainly you know, over the years, just little snippets. With what I've done at, at, at the level I've reached, it's not, oh, I'm bragging, I'm big. Uh, believe me, the system knows how big we are. They try to, they try to ignore it, and that's fine, because that's a badge of honor for us. But I go out in public anywhere in the world now, anywhere, and it's not, uh, it's not one out of 10 people saying hi to me like it used to be. It's one out of two or three, and, 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 but they all feel alone. Uh, I mean, I, I went to the Texas beach, and, and I'm not even on that many stations in Texas, uh, for, you know, even though I live here, and it's what happens in other parts of the country too, uh, for Mother's Day with my parents to camp out, and the car parked to our left was listeners, and the car parked to our right, and people driving by would see me with my children in the surf and pull over, and the, the, uh, the park rangers knew who I was. Uh, and, and again, and that shows, but one group was awake, the other group were tyrants, and I think were harassing us, but the point is, is that there's a war going on. And every little thing we do is a is bullets downrange in the info war. So I tell people, just start fighting. You see tyranny, speak out against it, call it out. And 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 when people try to ninny at you or peck at you to shut up, get in their face. I mean, this is a time to be aggressive and to be confident and to be focused. C. Bell Edmonds, thank you sh uh, so much, and and thank you for for challenging their gag order and putting your book out. Thank you, greatly appreciate it. Wow, amazing. Wow. Thank you. We'll have to get her back on in the near future. We're going to go to break and come back with the cartridge box. You know, there's many ways to vote. There's the ballot box. There's the cartridge box, the grand jury box. And uh, the globalists just tamper with the computer boxes. But we're going to come back and give you a journey into the fun side of the Second Amendment. I like gun shows on TV. I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I like watching some of them. And I, I watch stuff on YouTube, all the shooter enthusiasts. Uh, so we're going to come back with my idea uh, of that right after this quick break. And then that will conclude this marathon edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Don't forget, she's under attack. Get her book and support her. We're under attack. I don't even get into how we're under attack. But believe me, we're under financial attack, a lot of other attacks, and uh, it only makes us stronger, quite frankly. It only makes me get up earlier in the morning and work harder to know how real this is. I was going to mention this to Bell, but I forgot to do it. You know, when, when, when the government calls up and tells you what your wife was just telling you and threatens you and goes, yeah, that's right, we're listening to you, punk, or they call your wife up and say, I see your dog in the backyard, can't wait to cut your head off. Uh, I mean, and this has happened before in front of my crew. Like when I was at Bilderberg four years ago, same place they're about to have it in Chantilly, it had just ended... We were over there, um, you know, eating dinner before we got on the airplane, and I uh, was talking to my wife about her family member in the hospital, and um, it was a private conversation, and then she called back three minutes later, very upset, and they were talking about her family member hoping he died and stuff, and going, yeah, we're listening to you. I mean, th that's who works for this government at the, at the higher levels. And I know it was all the guys that I'd just seen as their security detail. And they, they were U.S. government, State Department. They think calling up and being mean to an American citizen, a journalist's wife, is cool. Listen, buddy, all you did was give me massive energon cubes. You understand that? All you did was give me fuel. All you did was recommit. All this stuff, that's not, there's a hundred other stories. All of that only lets me know how real it is. Believe me, folks, this stuff is real, okay? This is so real, I can't even explain it to you. And these are bad people. And the little minions think it's cute to call up and tell somebody's wife stuff like that. People that call up and threaten to cut her head off, stuff like that. Folks, do you want your kids growing up in a country like this? I know you don't care. You're a mercenary. But there's a lot of people in the system who aren't bad. You feel bad when you're part of this for a reason. It's not good for humanity. I see so many cases now where cops or retired cops have their sons and daughters tasered or beaten to death for no reason by police. Folks, this, all this comes back on you. All this stuff's going to come back on you. That's, look, you don't have to wait to die to be judged. You can debate all that all day. I've learned one thing. What you do comes back on you. What you do comes back on you. And you can call that God-fearing. It's like you feel the universe looking at you. You know when something's not good. You got to go with that conscience. Okay, that's, that's your inner compass. The globalists want you rudderless. Don't be rudderless. 
We're going to come back and uh, have some fun. I'll tell you, this is spectacular. This is spectacular. First half's powerful. Second half, spectacular. 15-day free trial, prisonplanet.tv. You put fuel in our tank, help us be strong, help the crew be strong and be financially secure so they can work hard and just work hard for liberty, work hard for ourselves, work hard for you. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. I can, I can feel the power of humanity rising. We are going to stomp the globalist right back to hell where they came from. Stay with us. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. We've done a lot of things in 17 years of the info war, but I've always wanted to do a gun show for five or six years. Now they're so incredibly popular, I figured we should uh, start producing every week or every few weeks a local gun show and to show it to the rest of the country and the rest of the world. And our next episode is going to be even more powerful, but this one turned out pretty darn good. And the first half is interesting and informative dealing with self-defense and shotguns and things, but then it goes into high gear in the second part. So here is the first installment of Brothers in Arms. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. Viewers know that I am a staunch defender of the Bill of Rights and Constitution, and chief amongst those rights is the right of self-defense that every tyrannical system has sought to curtail. Our country was founded back in 1775, 1776, when the corrupt British Empire attempted to disarm the people. Lay down your arms! You won't get my gun! By God, we will have them all! Our ancestors fought back, and our wonderful republic, the United States of America, was born. Well, I seek to defend the Second Amendment via the First Amendment, the right of the press and free speech. And that's why I have produced this first installment of Brothers in Arms with uh, two friends I knew in high school here in Austin, the Steiner brothers and their friend, gun expert and gunsmith, Matt Williams. So here is the first installment of Brothers in Arms, shot and filmed right here in Austin, Texas. This is my idea of a gun show. I'm Tommy Shane Steiner, and this is my brother Sid. Along with our pal, firearms instructor and gunsmith, Matt Williams, we're Texans and Americans who support and celebrate the Second Amendment, which makes all of us brothers in arms. We're out here at the ranch, shooting guns, uh you know, doing what we did growing up. We brought Matt along, who's our gun expert. Did you guys bring anything out to shoot today? Or? I brought my uh, HKK 45. Also brought my shotgun, as well as my custom lever gun. I know you brought some guns, too. What'd you Yeah, bring? I brought my, uh, my trusty Desert Eagle 44. I got the 338 Lapua and the uh, AR-15. You boys ready to go throw some lead? All right. Kicking off the show, we had to go with the staple. Melons on a stick. It's very much like a head on a pike. I just had to take a couple shots myself at the melons. The 338 Lapua was my most recent purchase. This is the first chance that I got to shoot it. 